Hi everyone, and welcome to uh, Major Migrations Made Easy. Uh, my name is Tim Tabake, and I'm a Java consultant at JDriven. And I'm happy to present here on a topic I'm passionate about, which is automating major migrations. I do a lot of these migrations as a consultant, as I switch between companies about every year. Typically, my assignments see me bring outdated technology stacks back up to date. And I love the temporary moment of zen that you get when everything is just right, running on all the latest versions. But then, soon enough, I switch to a new assignment and get to do the same thing all over again. Here's a brief overview of the types of migrations I'll be talking about. Likely, you performed uh, some of these migrations already in the past, and other migrations are always just around the corner. If you look back over time, there's a near constant stream of worthwhile improvements to pick up. And I like the challenge. I still get excited whenever a new version comes out. I just don't like the repetitive elements that come with upgrading. And if you try to keep up by hand, you will hardly get anything else done. Especially as microservices mean you're now just not, not just upgrading just once, but dozens of times. Automation may be the only option, especially for large companies maintaining thousands of services. So, imagine my excitement last year when I discovered Open Rewrite. Open Rewrite promises to make light of all such migrations. With a simple command, you can now upgrade between versions of Java and Spring. And you can even migrate between frameworks, such as from JUnit to AssertJ, and from Java EE to Spring. In this talk, I'll tell you all about Open Rewrite, how it came about, how it works, and what you can do with it. And finally, we'll look briefly at who's developing these recipes and how to apply them to open source projects. So, Open Rewrite was started at Netflix, initially to aid in the migration of an internal logging framework to SLF4J. You can probably imagine that any logging framework is going to be pervasive throughout your organization. To even consider migrating, you would need perfectly accurate automation, especially when usage is spread across hundreds of services. So what they developed is a parser to accurately read Java code and turn that source code into an abstract syntax tree. This model can then be modified to replace the old logging statements with calls to SLF4J. Then next, the migrated model is written out as close as possible to the original source code. This way, the applied changes are minimal, leaving surrounding code untouched. Later, the same developers moved on to work at, on Spinnaker. And while trying to onboard teams and organizations there, they found teams often struggled with the same outdated libraries and frameworks. To help these teams adopt the latest versions, they applied a different set of transformations through the same abstract syntax tree parser. This allowed them to quickly reduce this technical debt, uh, bringing teams from Spring Boot 1 to 2 and from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5. The project has since been open sourced, and the company behind it is committed to making all recipes available under the Apache license for open source software. The initial focus for Open Rewrite is on Java virtual machine languages and surrounding technologies. There are parsers for Java, Groovy, and XML. These in turn unlock support for build tools such as Maven and Gradle, and libraries such as JUnit, AssertJ, and Guava. Ultimately, refactoring entire frameworks and platforms is supported, with recipes available for application frameworks such as Micronaut, Quarkus, and Spring. Open Rewrite is not the only parser capable of understanding and manipulating Java. However, two features set Open Rewrite apart from the competition. The first is their focus on exact type attribution. By having the exact type available on any tree element, they can be sure to only ma manipulate exact matches. The second characteristic that sets Open Rewrite apart is their format preservation. Their parser not only takes into account the functional code, but also the surrounding code style and indentation. This allows them to accurately reproduce your source file, regardless of further changes. Any changes made through Open Rewrite look just as like a colleague worked on your code. 
Together, these features make Open Rewind exceptionally good at safe code transformations. Their changes are minimally invasive and guaranteed to work, in part due to their do-no-harm mentality. By manipulating the full abstract syntax tree, Open Rewrite can far exceed simple search and replace operations. With the full abstract syntax tree built, we need to instruct Open Rewrite what operations to apply, where in your code. Recipes are how you define such a group of search and refactoring operations. Together, they accomplish a higher level task, such as a framework migration. Recipes can consist of a single, standalone operation or be linked together with other recipes. An open rewind comes with a large collection of fine grained recipes out of the box that can be combined for common migration steps. You can think of these um, recipes as Lego building blocks, ready to be applied with the proper parameters. And there are hundreds of these building blocks to, for instance, change types, change arguments, change uh, methods, manipulate properties, and alter dependencies and plugins. Individual recipes are implemented as Java visitors that first match and then modify elements of the abstract syntax tree. There are plenty of examples available, but note that you only need a Java visitor when none of the existing recipes can already achieve your goals. Typically, you can get very far only configuring, combining, and applying existing recipes through a YAML description file. Modules combine and group together these fine-grained recipes into more coarse-grained, application-specific recipes. There are modules, for example, for logging frameworks, testing frameworks, and application frameworks, such as Spring. Think of these as Lego sets with building plans for common migrations and fixes, ready to be used. In my opinion, the abstract syntax tree, combined with the large collection of open source recipes, is what sets Open Rewind apart from other similar tools, such as Google Aeropron's Refaster. Now, I want to show you how migration recipes are configured in Open Rewind. Let's briefly look at a migration from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5. I want you to imagine what steps would be needed for a JUnit 5 migration. You likely know a couple of the steps already. Among others, you would have to update the test annotations. But you would also have to update the assertions and sometimes their argument order. You'd have to update all imports, any test rules, and that's just getting started. Notice how each step is reflected as a separate recipe in this YAML configuration file. Some refer to and configure generic steps, such as the change type recipe. Others are implemented as an imperative step, a dedicated Java visitor that changes the abstract syntax tree. All these steps combine to achieve a complete JUnit 5 migration. And this is a common pattern with Open Rewind. Large migrations are broken up into small reusable steps. When we run this recipe, we get predictable results. Our imports are converted as we would expect, and our Mokito runner is converted into using the extension. Lifecycle annotations such as at before are correctly replaced. And now, interestingly, we can see how Open Rewrite shines through when it comes to converting expected exceptions. Having the full power of an abstract syntax tree, combined with a Java visitor, allows us to adopt assert throws. This would not be possible with a regular expression approach. And it's just a small sample of the types of transformations that are possible. Running migration recipes is fairly straightforward. First, you apply a build tool plugin for Open Rewrite. I've used Maven in my examples, but Gradle works just as well. Then, depending on the changes you want to make, add a dependency on the respective Open Rewrite module. And lastly, run the Open Rewrite plugin with the migration recipe that you want to execute. The command seen here will migrate a Spring Boot application to the latest version. And this works all the way back to Spring Boot 1.5. It will update dependencies, properties, and deprecations from any older versions. 
and it includes the JUnit 5 migration seen before, as well as any Spring-specific test constructs. So, now that we've seen how Open Rewind works, let's have a look at what you can do with it. Obviously, by now, we've seen that it is well suited to migrations. You've mostly seen migrations from one version to another, but you can also migrate from one framework to another. If you want to switch from log4j to slf4j, you can. And the same thing goes for migrating between JUnit and assertj. And even larger migrations are in development. Another application is fixing static analysis findings. A large collection of check style, sonar, and security findings are supported to allow you to reduce your technical depth in minutes. And finally, there's a whole class of recipes to enforce code style. Rather than merely apply a formatter, these style recipes go a step further to actually change your code. This ensures your code style reads consistently from project to project. And in addition to what is already available, it's fairly easy to add custom recipes specific to your projects. So, now that we've seen how it works and what it can do, let's briefly look at what is still to come. As you've seen, Open Rewind has dedicated parsers for multiple languages already. They, uh, but as you can imagine, they have some catching up to do still. They are working on a parser for both Java 17 and Kotlin. So, but note that you're perfectly able to run on Java 17, but you cannot yet migrate to any of the new language features. And the interesting thing about Kotlin is going to be that the Java migration recipes will just work even though the languages look very different. Another interesting development is the Spring Boot Migrator project. It builds upon Open Rewind to migrate projects towards Spring from other frameworks. It takes a slightly different, more interactive approach, which will be helpful when Spring Boot 3 comes out in uh, November. All three of these features are in active development. It's not yet clear when you can use any of this, but interesting developments nonetheless. As a last subject, I think it's only fair to tell you a bit about the company behind Open Rewind. As I said, they have committed to making all recipes available open source. Their focus is on applying recipes at scale. Through Moderna, clients can discover code patterns across an entire organization and target these for transformation. And even if you're not a paying customer, you can still use their web interface to browse available recipes and even apply them to open source projects. This can be a great way to start contributing back to open source software. And if you find any migration steps are missing, Open Rewind itself is very accepting of new contributions. And the community plays a large role in the development of new recipes. And so with that, we are getting near the end of my presentation. Before I send you on your way, I want to recommend a few resources where you can learn more. There's extensive documentation and tutorials available on Open Rewind. And development is all on GitHub with new suggestions picked up with surprising speed. And as we've already seen, it's quite easy to contribute minor migration steps. If you want to try some recipes quickly on open source projects, have a look at public.moderna.io. And if you have any questions, I found the team behind Open Rewind to be very friendly and responsive. And finally, if you want to play around with the commands shown before, I've written a blog post to accompany this presentation. That way, you can play around with the commands and see the changes made at every step. For your own projects, I recommend you start with the testing framework migrations. They are an easy way to gain confidence in the tool and see what it can do for your project. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out either in person or online. And uh, thank you all for your attention.